The blueprint for salvation can be found in the Old Testament Hebrew sanctuary. This system given by God to the people of Israel is vitally important for us to understand. And many Christians today don't really study the Old Testament Hebrew sanctuary. In this video, I'm going to give you more information about this blueprint that God gave to us in the days that we find ourselves in so that we can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. If you've not subscribed yet to our channel, then click on the subscribe button on the bell and on all and you receive the notifications when we upload new videos. If you want to donate to the self-supporting ministry, you can do so by becoming a member here on YouTube, become a Patreon or give a once-off donation via PayPal. And if you're in South Africa, you can actually use the banking details as below in the description. We really appreciate it. So let's get to our video for today. In John 14 verse 6, the Bible says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus said, the only way to the Father is through Jesus. Now listen to this powerful text in the Old Testament. In Psalm 77 verse 13, Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God is our God. So God's way is in the sanctuary. And Jesus said, I am the way. Therefore, the way of God and salvation can be found within the compounds of the Hebrew sanctuary. This is why God explains to us how we are saved and how we are changed for the kingdom. This is an illustration of the sanctuary. Here you have the courtyard and then you have the tabernacle or the tent. If you look at it from above, you see that you've got the courtyard where you have the laver, and the altar burnt offering and then you have the holy place the first compartment of the tent and then the most holy place the second compartment of the tent now why did god ask moses to build the sanctuary what is the significance even though we've already seen it but even more powerfully what was god trying to say let's go to exodus chapter 25 and verse 8 and let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them so the goal was that God wanted to dwell among his people and he used the Hebrew sanctuary to accomplish this purpose. If you look at where God dwelt, it was in the most holy place of the sanctuary. The Bible also says that Moses received the pattern, the blueprint for the Hebrew sanctuary by actually observing the one in heaven. Exodus chapter 25 verse 40. And see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown to you in the mountain. So God showed him the pattern of the sanctuary. What pattern was that? Well, it's the heavenly sanctuary. Because in the book of Revelation and in the book of Hebrews, we clearly read that there is a sanctuary in heaven. In Revelation chapter 1, Jesus walks among the seven lampstands. In Revelation chapter 8, it talks about the incense that comes from the altar of incense. And in Revelation chapter 11, it talks about the temple of God that is open. And there was the Ark of the Covenant in the heavenly sanctuary. And among the seven last plagues, you read of and Revelation chapter 14, where Jesus and the angels comes from the temple. So there is a temple in the heavenly sanctuary. Now, what was in the courtyard of the sanctuary? Well, you had the door where the priests entered and where the sinners entered, where they brought their lamb offering to be confessed upon their sins. And then the lamb was slain and burned upon the altar of a burnt offering. The sinner then went away and the priest continued the work. Now, Jesus told us that he is actually the door in John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The second piece of furniture was the altar of burnt offering. This is where the lamb was slain on behalf of the sinner. The blood was shed. We read in Exodus 29 verse 18, And you shall burn the whole ram on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord. So this is where they burned the lamb. What did the lamb represent? What did it point to? 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, For indeed Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. So Jesus is represented by the Lamb. So Jesus is the door and He is the Lamb that is sacrificed. He is our Passover Lamb. Then the next piece of furniture was the laver in the courtyard of the sanctuary. This is where the priests had to wash their hands. What did this represent? Exodus 30 verse 18 says, You shall also make a laver 
of bronze. Well, we get more insight into this because this water that we found in the laver is symbolic of something. And in the New Testament, it tells us in 1 Peter 3, verse 20 and 21, it says, Who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, and which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the labor represents the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And just like the water saved the people in Noah's day, it wasn't the ark, it was the water, because the water cleansed the earth of sin, so the resurrection of Christ today, by us getting baptized, would cleanse and empower us to live a new life, so that we have a good conscience toward God, meaning our minds are renewed. What is this process called? Me entering the door, confessing my sins on the Lamb, the Lamb getting slain in my behalf, and then being baptized and my mind being transformed by God. What is this process called? The theological word is justification. Just as if I've never sinned. So this is what happens in the courtyard. Then what was in the holy place of the sanctuary? Well, you had the showbread on the right with 12 stacks of bread upon it. Numbers 4 verse 7, On the table of showbread they shall spread a blue cloth, and the showbread shall be on it. So this is the showbread pointing also to Jesus and the word of God. In John 6 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So Jesus is the bread. He is the word. We need to feed on him daily. Once we are saved, this is not the process that takes place as a Christian. I need to spend time daily in the word of God. Therefore, the Hebrew sanctuary is a blueprint. Then, on the left, you had the candlestick. The candlestick represents the light that needed to shine in the holy place. It was the only light in the holy place and it burned day and night. We read in Exodus 25, 31, You shall also make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand shall be of hammered work. Its shaft, its branches, its bowls, its ornamental knobs and flowers shall be of one piece. And Jesus, what did he say about being the light of the world? In John chapter 8, verse 12, he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, because that's the oil that was within the lamp that made the lamp burn, the light then shone, meaning Jesus' light shines through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when we are filled by the Holy Spirit as a Christian, we will let the light of Jesus shine. We would witness to other people. So as a Christian, once I'm saved, I'll spend time in the Word of God, that's the showbread, and I will spend time in telling others and let, letting my life shine by being filled with the Holy Spirit as a Christian. The third ornament in the holy place was the altar of incense. The Bible says in Exodus 30 verse 1, You shall make an altar to burn incense on. What did this incense represent? What It represents the merits of Jesus Christ, the life that He lived. But for us, it's when we come to God in prayer. Then our prayers, along with the incense, ascended into the most holy place of the sanctuary where God's presence was. In Psalm 141, 2, it says, Let my prayer be set before you as incense. You can read the same thing in Revelation chapter 8, where it says the prayers of the saints went with the incense into the kingdom of God. So it represents our prayers. As a Christian, we need to live by prayer. It's the breath of the soul. So we need to study the Bible. We need to witness and we need to pray. That's the Christian life once you are saved. And Jesus said in John 14, 13, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus is the only mediator between God and man. And when I pray, He steps in for me, the Holy Spirit takes my words and makes it acceptable, Jesus offers it to the Father, and then my prayers are accepted by heaven. Now, what is this process called? The courtyard is justification, 
and the holy place is sanctification. This is where God transforms me back into the original image that He gave to Adam and Eve. He doesn't want me to sin anymore. He doesn't want me to go for the world anymore. He wants me to live for Him fully, totally surrendered. And that's what the holy place represents. Now, what was in the most holy place of the sanctuary? It was the Ark of the Covenant. And inside the Ark of the Covenant was Aaron's rod, the manna, and the Ten Commandments. All of these had a purpose. The manna pointed to the manna that Israel received, which points to Jesus. The rod pointed to the fact that Israel conquered with the rod and had signs through the rod, which points to the Holy Spirit. And the fact that it budded pointed to the fact that Aaron was the high priest and today for us it confirms that Jesus is our high priest and the Ten Commandments is the character of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It is their character given to humanity in the Ten Precepts written upon the Ten Commandments. Exodus 26 verse 34, You shall put the mercy seat upon the Ark of the Testimony in the Most Holy. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you. Verse 21. And the Ten Commandments represents God's character. If you look at what the Bible has to say about the Ten Commandments, what it has to say about the character of God, in different Bible verses, you would see they're both the same. They're both just, true, pure, light, faithful, good, spiritual, holy, truth, life, righteousness, perfect, and forever. And that represents the character of Christ given to humanity. And Jesus said in John chapter 14, 15, if you love me, meaning if you are being sanctified in the holy place, keep my commandments. Do as I have directed you to do as given in the Ten Commandments. So my friends, this blueprint given by God to humanity is a vitally important subject for us to understand. Because Jesus is currently ministering in the heavenly sanctuary at this moment. What does this mean? In future studies, as we continue right here on YouTube, I will tell you more about this amazing subject of the sanctuary. And keep on watching because next year I'm going to do live studies where you can join in Zoom and you can actually find out exactly how God will prepare His end time people by using the sanctuary. If you've learned something new, then click on the subscribe button on the bell and all, and you will receive the notifications when I upload new videos. Please pray for our channel as we take the gospel to as many people as possible.